Hey there everyone, Scipio here, and I just put a coil grounding kit from EQT into my 2019 Golf R. Let me show you how and why. Maybe I'll show you why, then how. Let me show you. All right, so this is the coil grounding kit from EQT. This is the pro version. They also have a standard version which doesn't require a depending process you're gonna see here. It's actually very much easier to install because all you're doing is bolting the ground coil wires that are in place from the factory to another harness, but I'm not covering that in this video because I have the Pro Kit. So I'm gonna show you how easy it is to depend and install this particular coil grounding kit. So the problem that we're trying to solve here is you have these coil grounding wires that are connected to your ignition coils and it's just a pain in the butt. First of all, if you just wanna pull spark plugs, you've got to mess with this ground wire. You've got the double nut thing, you've gotta hold the bottom uh, bolt while you undo the top nut and uh, it creates a couple problems. A lot of people have accidentally broken these ground wires and had to repair or replace them. And then there's a lot of people who have stripped bolts and that creates issues not only just because you have stripped bolts but it creates grounding issues this kit allows you to rerun your grounds to a chassis ground and just get it off of the coils altogether and there are people who have ignition troubles because of these ground wires and this grounding kit will solve that some people have actually reported a reduction in knock retard and that's because of the poor grounding circuit. So once they install the grounding kit, it fixes that. I don't necessarily have a problem with that that I know of, but I am gonna keep an eye on it and see if I get a reduction in knock retard moving forward. This is more of an install for me for convenience so that I can pull plugs without dealing with those stupid ground wires ever again. So some of you are gonna be like, oh, well, I can just make this myself, but just know that this is not your average like auto parts grade wire. This is Milspec Tefzel, and it's designed specifically for military and aerospace applications. It can handle higher amperages in a smaller diameter wire. Also, the shrink tubing they used is Raychem DR25. It is flexible, lightweight, oil resistant, fuel resistant, and also has excellent abrasion resistance. So very high quality components, and it's designed to plug right into the OE plug and replace that existing ground wire. All right, so once you had your ground wires removed off of the grounding lugs, we needed to pull off the connectors. Uh, you can use a little pick tool. Sometimes I can do it with my fingers. Sometimes just lifting up like this with the pick tool helps a lot. And then get these pulled off of the ignition coils. Then to expose the backside of the plug, we're just gonna use, in my case, a small flathead screwdriver to release the clips on these little covers. And then you can pull the plug out just like that. And you can see, we're just gonna remove that black ground wire and replace it. Be careful though, you can break these little uh, plastic covers, but it's not detrimental if you do. All right, I'm just gonna lay out sort of where I think I might want to run this uh, ground wire to the passenger side. The grounding lug we're gonna use is, is behind the passenger headlight and uh, right there by the motor mount. So I'll show you that here in more detail. I just wanna make sure I understand where it's gonna go before I start installing the wires into the plugs. And yeah, I think I'm gonna run it right through here, just like that. That's the route I'm gonna take. All right, so I am using a depinning kit. I got this off of Amazon. I'll put a link in the video description. I've got a handful of these things laying around from various projects, but I decided to just go ahead and get a fresh kit that, uh, that I could keep together because I can't find all the other ones. In this kit, I'm using number five. It works perfect for this. And uh, I'll show you exactly how this tool works. First thing we need to do is slide off this protective purple locking tab. It's pretty easy to get off again with that little flathead screwdriver. And then with that done, we can just stick the D-pin tool all the way in until it bottoms out. It's not very hard. 
and then that will release the tabs on the grounding wire so that we can pull it out. And you can see the grounding wire compared to what comes with the new grounding kit, same exact tabs. And the way the depending tool works is when you press it in there, it compresses those little ears that lock the plug into the housing. So I'm just gonna do that process on all of the rest of the plugs and then uh, lay out my grounding harness now to uh, make sure that I have them in the right order because they are uh, cut to length. And then you're gonna reinsert it from the back the same exact way you pulled the other one out. Just like that. Now, uh, and then I always give it just a little tug to make sure it's latched in there properly with those little locking ears. And I'm just gonna go through this process for the other three plugs. And you have to push it a little bit hard because you've got that weatherproofing seal, that blue seal that has to get pushed into the little hole in the back. And so you might have to give it a little pressure, but that's okay. And there you go. Just like that. All of those are now replaced. And you can tuck this underneath the factory wiring harness if you want, or leave it on top like I did. Uh, Either way, whatever your preference is. Don't forget to put back in the purple locking tabs. They'll actually click twice when you push them in, so you'll feel like click, click as you do that. So make sure that those get locked in properly. Again, you can take as much time as you want trying to hide those ground wires. I don't see much point in it. They don't look any different than all the factory wiring that's all over the freaking place anywhere on this ugly engine. Then once you have that in, you're gonna put your plugs back in to the little, um, recesses in this this plastic loom carrier and just make sure they get pushed all the way into place and uh yeah lock them in just like that all right now we can go ahead and plug them back on to the ignition coils make sure you push them down until they click into place there we go. Now we are completely grounded, so to speak, on the plugs, and we don't need to use those little grounding lugs anymore. So those can actually go away, and I'll show you that here in a few minutes. All right, now we need to deal with the actual chassis side of the ground. Uh, right here on the Golf R, at least, I'm assuming it's gonna be the same on most vehicles uh, in the MQB platform. Behind the passenger side headlight, there is this grounding lug. There are three clips that hold the cover for this ground lug uh, into place. So I'm just using a little screwdriver to get that uh, popped open. Again, there's three of those little clips. You just pry them and loosen them up. Then there is a 10 millimeter nut. And once I get that loosened up, uh, you'll be able to see how this looks, but there are uh, already slots for additional ground wires. And I'm just gonna use one of those slots. In this case, one of those slots is pointed almost straight up and you'll see how I use that once I get this routed the way I want it. There you go right there, and it fits right into uh, that little slot for another wire. Put the nut back on, tighten her down, and then I can snap that cover back into place. Just like that. Looks very clean, looks factory. And uh, yeah, I'm glad they left us several different options for adding additional ground wires to that lug. That was very nice of the Volkswagen engineers. All right, now I'm just going to use a couple of zip ties to zip tie the rest of the harness uh, along with additional wiring that is already there just to keep it all nice and tidy. Uh, you have these uh, old ground wires. I'm gonna throw those in my spare parts bin uh, and save them just in case I need them later. And then I'm using these. Uh, these are uh, AutoZone uh, accessible uh, bolts, the M6 by one and 45 millimeter length. You could probably get away with a shorter length, maybe 40, 40 millimeter, maybe even 35, uh, but 45 millimeter is the, is the length of the factory bolt that we're replacing, so I'm gonna use that. 
and then just pull that out and then drop in the replacement. Now you can get fancy with this as well. You can use button head, hex, uh, whatever you want. I just use these, quite frankly, because I don't really care that much. It's all under an engine cover right now anyway, so they all are gonna look the same. And um, I don't have to pull out any special tools. If I'm doing spark plugs, I'm pulling out my socket set anyway, so may as well just keep it with a socket. Now, the factory bolts are triangular shaped. They're actually oval shaped, not round, like the ones we're replacing it. And that's one of the reasons why people have so many problems with them stripping easy. I don't know the exact reason why they are there. Some people say they're for anti-vibration. Some people say they're for uh, self-cutting uh, threads. I don't know, but they're triangular shaped and they're a pain in the butt for people who, uh, even being super careful, end up cross-threading and stripping. I'm gonna put these with those wiring uh, grounds in the parts bin. And then here's the final look at the install. And now, I never have to deal with those stupid four little ground wires again. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you learned something from this. If you have any questions, let me know. And as usual, I'll catch you on the next one.